Hello and welcome back. Today I'm going to teach you how to use tactics on your benefit in order to win $2,000 or more. And let's dive in. I had the white pieces, I played d4 on Litzes, this is a blitz game on Litzes. He continued with c6 and um, I don't know why exactly he went on this move order. Maybe he would like to play Karo Khan after e4. He can continue with uh, the Karo Khan or something like that or after c4. Um, after c4 maybe he can try the Slav defense. Maybe this is his idea. So okay, I played e4 here and uh, he played queen to b6. This is an extremely strange move actually and you should not develop your queen uh, very early in the game. There is a system here and he can play g6 immediately and after that he can play bishop g7, d5. This is a well-known system in uh, Karo Khan. White can um, get a little advantage, but uh, okay, the game can go goes on. But he played queen to b6 very strangely. I played c4, and now it's um, a mix about e4 and d4 moves. He played this one, I played c5 to gain a, a tempo, and after that he played queen to c7. Now I'd like to develop my bishop and gain another tempo. It's very important on opening to gain tempi. And uh, for that reason, I played g g3 in order to develop my bishop here. He played bishop to g7, bishop to f4, as you can see. He played d6, I captured, he recaptured. I go forward because, uh, okay, why just develop his pieces? It's nothing very special to, um, it's nothing very special goes on here. I developed my knight, knight e7, bishop to g2, short castling, knight g e2, keeping everything intact, overprotecting my center, white is... Uh, uh, slightly better here and um, I have a permanent advantage because I have a, sp a space advantage, better development and uh, better plans. He played b5 now and uh, before continue he, before developing his pieces he tried to counter attack my pieces or to kick away my knight. I played a3, stop that idea and now we have a5 short castling of course it's important to develop your um, all of your pieces. Now we have bishop to b7 and now it's the first, um, not the critical moment, but it's um, very important to understand what the opponent is threatening. It's white's turn, it's black's turn here, but I'm threatening something. Can you find the threat here? This is important. And the threat is that we are threatening to capture on uh, b5 because the c6 pawn is pinned. This queen is behind thanks to that rook, so this is the first uh, tactic. And black cannot do anything he likes and for that reason he foreseen that one and he played queen to b6. And he moved again his queen, you see, if he likes to do this uh, plan, this player is uh, 2000 L only chess, so it's not amateur, but uh, he didn't play correctly. And uh, here, if he likes to do this setup, he has to play b5 first and after that queen to b6. But he mixed the ideas, he stayed behind in development, he didn't create a very good plan and uh, I have clear advantage here. And uh, now I'm seeing why I didn't capture that pawn actually, because this pawn is uh, hanging. I have to do more tactics, right? But I played bishop to uh, bishop e3 here, maybe I didn't thought about that uh, so much. Maybe I'd like to play something like... Uh, um, d5 to open up more lines and uh, putting the pieces against his queen. So he dropped back the queen again, queen to d8, queen d2, continue developing uh, everything, okay, knight d7, rook fd1, rook c8 and now I start uh, my middle game plan because everything is fine right now but I can see one of his active pieces. Can you find one of his uh, best active pieces? And this is the bishop here on g7 because it can do a lot of works there and I played bishop to h6 in order to eliminate this active piece and maybe create some attacking chances later against his uh, king. So he played knight f6, I capture, he recaptures h3 to overprotect everything, I don't like any jumps here on uh, g4, for that reason I played that move, okay, queen to b6, again he moved his uh, queen on uh, b6, king h2 rook f e8 and f4 gaining more space and as you can see i had a plan i played h3 in order to put my king here on h2 create safety of my king and now i'm controlling the center and i'm ready to to create some breaks i have uh, d5 e5 or f5 i'll think about that okay if you, you can think if you have so pleasant position you can think about that so he played c5 here tried to challenge uh, the center 
And now it's uh, the first critical moment because the pieces had some connections right now and we can create a lot, a lot of things. You can pause the video if you like, you can think about two, two, three or five minutes here and come up with a solution. What do you think? What uh, we are going to play here with white? And here I'd like to teach you the intermediate move. Because before do something, you can do something else. Uh, in chess we have um, a German word about that and this is Zivanzuk. And here I played uh, a move, I played e5 as you can see because I'm attacking the knight. I'm creating pressure here and I'm, pay, I'm uh, uh, fighting uh, for d5 square. And here the queen is a little overloaded because the queen has to protect the bishop and has to protect this pawn on... Uh, on d6 as well and for that reason the most uh, obvious move for him is to capture the bishop on g2. So what you are going to do now? I had an idea behind e5 move and what is this idea? To capture intermediate on f6 and now I'm winning a piece because I capture now he captured the bishop I'm capturing his knight so the material is equal here but unfortunately he cannot save the bishop because I'm attacking the king and the knight. So the king captures there, I capture here on g2 and I win a piece. This is the tactic that you can use in your games in order to win uh, more and more games. Now he played um, c takes d4, I have more pieces, for that reason I exchange queens. Queen takes, knight takes, he played b4 and now I played knight to e4. I don't like just to exchange uh, random pieces, I played this one in order to attack his king. He went back and now knight d6. As you can see I'm attacking two of his rooks and uh, what he can do actually. He captures there, he is expecting me to, capture, to recapture the rook and after that he can save uh, his rook. But again we have the same tactic in the same game. Can you find it? Of course, knight takes to e8, this is a check, and after king f8, I capture there, he captures here, rook e1, pin the knight, and uh, my next move, anything he, he is going to do, may, I'm doing some random moves, I can capture here, this is uh, the easiest way, and I'm a piece up, I can put my king in the center of the board, and he can resign. I hope, I hope you enjoyed uh, this video, understand this tactic, intermediate move, or Zivanzug, and you can find it, you can apply this uh, rule and tactic directly in your games. So thank you very much, don't forget to click the link below in order to see more free lessons from me and see you soon!